Hey YouTube, got another video review for you today from a company called KBS Coatings. So stick around and check this out. Uh, a few weeks ago, I went to start my Honda generator and uh, the tank was all gummed up and it clogged my fuel filter up and, and it just wouldn't start. And so I was out here washing the old truck today and I thought, well, today would be, be a good day to clean this tank out and start working on it. Well, uh, as you can see, when I bought the generator, um, I bought it brand new, but somebody in the warehouse had dropped something on it and it dented the top right here and eventually it made a pinhole. You can see that little crease right there. It caused it to, uh, you know, make a little split and it, over time it just started uh, collecting rust. And then uh, I took and tried several methods of cleaning it and I uh, put some vinegar down in it and after I put the vinegar in there I noticed that there was another rust hole pinhole on the bottom and I thought oh great well now I've got two pinholes to deal with all right I don't know if you guys can see this but some of the water flowed out of that tube and it brought out a bunch of fine rust particles it's kind of <laughs> like uh panning for gold it's so fine uh, but there's some there's some larger flakes down in in the tank uh, you when I rinsed it out, uh, you could really see them. And then I, I left it right here with some water in there so you could see all the residual uh, rust and stuff left in that tank. And because I knew I wouldn't be able to shine the flashlight down in there and for you guys to be able to see in there very good. So I figured I'd show you this way since you could see through that clear plastic and on the can there. And then when I squeeze, you know, you can, you can see that rust moves. So if you're facing the same thing, Stay tuned because I'm going to show you how to get rid of it and uh, clean this tank out and, you know, seal it up. And that way you won't have any problems out of it. Well, as you can see, here's uh, all the products that they uh, send in the kit. And this is the uh, KBS uh, Clean. It's an all-purpose cleaner, degreaser. Helps get break up some of that varnish from the old gas and any oils left in the tank. And this just helps uh, get it to where, you know, you, you, you won't have any... Uh, coating that peels off because of, of oils trapped on, on the metal of the tank. This just helps get all that impurities out of the tank, gets it cleaned up, and then uh, you're good to go onto the rust blast. And this is pretty much just like a, <clears throat> an acid to etch the tank to you know make the surface uh, kind of rough uh, so the tank sealer here has something to bond to. And then <clears throat> since I had several pinholes <clears throat> on my tank, I opted to get the mesh, and what this is is just some sort of fiber mesh that you you cut with a pair of scissors, put over on the outside of the tank, and then paint over it with the brush with the tank sealer, and then uh, you know it'll it'll seal it up where those pinholes uh, won't leak anymore. So uh, they give you a couple, uh, well, a pair of rubber gloves, a little paintbrush, and then a stir stick for the tank sealer. Now, uh, in the directions, what it says to do is to go ahead and remove the tank from whatever you're working on. I've already done that. And it said to go ahead and plug up the holes. Well, as you've seen, there's like a little petcock, not a petcock, but a uh, little nipple there on the bottom um, to uh, hook the fuel line into so it'll, it'll drain because it's a gravity fed system. So the way I'm going to plug it is I'm just going to use a little redneck engineer and I've just got, I just took their gloves that they sent me in the kit and I'm gonna cut just a little corner off the top of these gloves and then I'm gonna take and I'm gonna stretch that over that little nipple area and then once I get it stretched over then I'm gonna wrap a, a zip tie around it to seal that little uh, area up so it won't leak out so whenever I pour the the uh, clean uh, cleaner in there then it'll it won't just run on out the the bottom so Stay tuned. All right, you can see what I was talking about. Like I said, I just took a piece of that rubber glove, stuck it over that little nipple area, put a zip tie on it, and you know, it seals it up. Uh, I did it like this for, uh, you know, a couple days when I was just washing it out uh, before I even knew about this kit. Uh, I just put some vinegar in there trying to get it to clean out and it, the vinegar just wouldn't, wasn't cutting it. So anyways, after you get it, that sealed up, then you go up here to the top 
and it says to take you some nuts and bolts or just hardware just whatever you got and this was you know just from some old um hardware from where i mounted a uh, a tv on the wall it come with a bunch of extra nuts and bolts so i'm just going to dump these down in the tank and then next you want to go ahead and, and pour the clean in here and then it says to also uh use hot water if you know if you have that accessible try to get it as hot as you can now i've got the cleaner degreaser right here i'm just going to go ahead and and pour it all in now it says that uh you need to mix it one to one so this is a a quart bottle so put a quart of water in there all right you can see i've got it piping hot you can see the steam coming off of it and i'm just gonna pour it in there and there's a little bit more in the quart so if i, I knew i was gonna probably drop some so this thing don't pour out very good now I'm just going to let her set. It says you can leave it up to like 24 hours and, and just let it do its work. And since this tank's so rusty, um, then, then I'm just going to leave it. And you can see right in there, look at some of the flakes that's come out of this thing. It's just ridiculous. I didn't, I would have never thought there would have been that much rust in a tank. So now that you got your cleaner in there, you got your hardware, your nuts and bolts in there, uh, and your water, hot water put in there, then you just take the tank and slosh it around and that way those nuts and bolts can have a chance to break up some of the rust in the bottom of the tank and on the sides and so you know just just shake it around and when you get tired of shaking shake it some more and i'll go ahead and show you i started purging the tank and you can see all the rust that's filled up the little grooves right in here this little stand that i have it on and then right here, you can see all the residual uh, rust that's just flowing right out of the, the gas tank. And before, that little nipple right there was clogged up and it wouldn't shoot a stream because it had so much rust in there. And I even tried taking a rat tail file for like sharpening a chainsaw and sticking it up in that, in that nipple and cleaning it out and it wouldn't, it wouldn't clean out. So uh, like I said, I put that cleaner in there and let it set for a few hours. And then come back and uh, shook them bolts up and it really helped it break all that rust and uh, remnants from old gas up in there. And, and you see it's got a full flow now. So, All right, well, as you can see, I've got the tank all flushed uh, nice and clean. Uh, there is really hardly any um, rust particles coming out the uh, nipple there. And, you know, I've went ahead and pulled out the uh, hardware that I put in there and you can tell it really did a number on them uh, nuts and, and bolts there and I just pulled them out just with a just a plain old magnetic uh, tool you can pick these up at any auto parts store or Home Depot Lowe's places like that maybe about 10 bucks or less and then once I drain all the water out then I'm gonna go back and uh, make sure it's all nice and dry before I put the the uh rust blast pre-paint primer this is pretty much the uh the acid type product that uh you put into the t a dry uh tank just keep moving it around so it stays coated on the inside because you don't want to let it dry because if you if you let it dry on the inside uh it'll it'll cake up and leave like a white flaky uh like road salt kind of uh, coating on there so make sure that you follow the direct because uh, you don't want it real thick. You just want it to etch that metal so that paint has a nice uh, porous surface to, to grab onto. All right, now that I've got all the water out of the tank and you know I don't want to sit here for two or three more days and uh, just wait for it to air dry. So you can take you a hair dryer or you, if you've got just a little cheap heat gun, you can pick these up at Harbor Freight like 10 bucks or something. They're really inexpensive. I would just set it on like the first heat setting and uh, I just take and leave it setting in there for just a, a couple minutes. Just make sure you watch it so it don't get too hot or whatever. All right, well, I got the tank all dried out with a heat gun. Well, you can clearly see now that uh, there's just a little bit of flash rust occurring from where the tank uh, was wet and I dried it out. And, but you can tell that there's no heavy rust at all. I mean, it's all white, whitish, silverish metal in there. And there's just a hint of orange, and uh, that's typical. 
and once you put that that uh, acid that I'm about to put in there inside there and roll it around for a little bit it's gonna take care of that and then once you get all that rust out it's gonna leave a nice uh, zinc phosphate coating behind uh, I went ahead and sealed the bottom of the tank up and I'm not gonna worry about these little pinholes because they're so small they just barely drip and I need to get a little bit of um, of that acid on the outside of here too because I'm gonna prep this for um, some mesh and then I'm gonna put some of the rust blast on it I'm gonna show you how to use it and then you can see right here there's a little bit of flash rusting occurring right here and there's a pinhole so I don't care if, if the the uh, the acid leaks out these pinholes like I said there, there needs to be a little bit uh, goes ahead and kills that rust out here on the outside and leaves a, a coating for that that rust seal to stick to so all right well i've got the rust blast the acid and i'm going to go ahead and this is the pre-paint prep i'm going to go ahead and pour it in the tank nice dry tank and you don't have to dilute it or anything you pour it in there full strength you know the thing is with this stuff is don't let it sit in one spot just like i said ever every five ten minutes get up and slosh it around and uh just so it stays nice and wet all right well it's been about 30 minutes maybe a little bit longer and i had this plugged up with a piece of that rubber glove but now what i'm going to do is take and i'm going to drain all the acid back into this little cup right here and then i'm going to go back and pour some over top of this area and then the the pinhole area on the other side and that way i'll have a, a zinc phosphate coating on that so um uh so that the uh rust preventative will have something to bond to all right well i went ahead and pulled all the acid out of the tank and there it is right there you can see that it has some rust particles in there but you know it's like magic when you look inside the the tank because we turn the light on where you can see now it looks brand spanking new I mean, this stuff really does a great job. Rust is, is gone for the most part. And then now you're fixing to rinse it out and, and get the rest of the residual rust out of there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take and put this back in the original bottle. And if you've ever got any rusty tools that you wanna clean up and get the rust off of them to paint, you can just leave them soaking in that or spray it on them. And it, it just eats that rust right off of there. So you can reuse this. Uh, so anyways, I wouldn't throw it away. Now keep in mind, now working with this acid, you don't want to get it on your concrete. You don't want to get it on uh, metal stuff, you know, because it does uh, eat that, that finish up on the metal. And uh, it can streak uh, aluminum and concrete pretty bad. So just uh, put it on a, a trash can like what I, I'm using right here. And, you know, when you're done, just hose the trash can off and it doesn't harm it in any way. I mean, think about it. It does come in a plastic container. Now you can see I'm sitting here purging the tank, getting all that acid out of there. And I just take the hose, stick it in there and any residual rust, a, a float and come out the top and, and it'll come out the bottom. And you can see that little nipple right there that was so restricted in flow before it's, uh, it's going full force now. You can see it's all just cleaned itself up and you know, I would take and run this a few minutes and then turn it upside down, shake it out and then maybe rinse it one more time. and and yours should be good you shake the the tank around and make sure that there's absolutely no water in there absolutely no water because you want the best adhesion and they recommend that you you leave it uh 24 hours just to make sure but you know i've run the, the heat gun in there uh, several times and it's it's bone dry and you can check it out with a flashlight and you can you can see just what an amazing job if the camera will focus but uh it, it done an amazing job of getting all the rust and old gas uh, out of that tank. It, I mean, really, if you could have seen the mess that was in there, it was just unreal. I mean, it clogged that fuel filter up on the generator, um, and, and it just <laughs> it just would not run. Right in here, you can see that there's a, a pinhole right there, and I won't touch it because I don't want to get the oils from my, my fingers on there. But uh, the way that you're going to fix that pinhole is they give you a piece of mesh and you can you can choose it whether you want it or if you don't need it. Uh, but uh, they'll give you this piece of mesh and it's kind of, it's kind of uh, feels kind of similar to like a dryer sheet or something like that. But it's it's thicker 
and it has some little um, fibers in there. So what I did was just take and, and trim me a little piece out. And what you want to do is take some of that gold standard tank sealer right here and paint over that. They give you a supplied paintbrush and you just paint over that and then you lay your patch right over top of it. And then once you get your patch all laid down nice and flat, then go back and paint you another layer of the gold standard on top of it. And uh, there's a pin hole in the bottom as well. And I'm going to uh, trim a, a piece out for it. And uh, I'm going to make sure it's all sealed up. And uh, then, you know, um, go ahead and take and, and pour your, your gold standard in your tank there. And now I'll go ahead and tell you, now when you open this stuff up, don't be tempted to shake it. Um, I mean, before you open it up, don't don't be tempted to shake sh shake the can to try to mix it up. That's why they give you this little popsicle stick here, so you can stir it and kind of bring the solids up from the bottom. And you can see it has a, a really wild looking consistency. But just just work that around real good for a couple minutes, and make sure you're stirring the bottom. And then, like I showed you, just pull it up. And I'll go ahead and tell you, they recommend wear uh, the gloves that they, they've given you uh, in the kit. Uh, I personally don't like wearing gloves, but I will say, if you get this stuff on your hands, you're probably going to wear it anywhere from three days to a week. So be prepared. If you got somewhere nice to go, a nice restaurant, or if you got to do a funeral or something like that, you know, you don't want to look like a hobo with, with uh, this mess all over your hands. So, so uh, also, you want to go ahead and seal up the little nipple there on the bottom and I cut the f two of the fingers out of the gloves and just slid it over there and just put another zip tie on there and I've got it all sealed up and what I'm going to do next is just go ahead and pour the the sealer the tank seal in there then I'll take a little bit of what's left in the can and and paint these areas and then I'll I'll uh, take and put the cap on there but before I put the cap on there I'm just going to take a Walmart bag and stick it in the hole and and seal it up because you know if you leave it in there you know you're going to get some of that tank sealer on your your rubber gasket there and you don't want to do that so just keep your you, this all nice and clean the best you can and then then uh I'm going to keep it rotated in all different directions and try to work that sealer into every nook and cranny and all the pinch welds and any kind of welds uh, or pinhole or you know, or corner on this tank just just try to keep on working it and I know it's a pain in the butt to have to keep moving the tank around but you know the the better you get it sealed up uh, then you know the longer it's gonna last and you won't have any problems out of it so now one last thing I'm working on a glass top table and so I figured if I spilled any, I could always get it up with a razor blade. But, you know, uh, make sure that you work in a well-ventilated area. Make sure that you're also uh, working in an area where if you spill some of this stuff, um, it, like I said, it don't come up very easy. There's nothing really that can take this stuff up. All right. So I'm going to take a little bit of this uh, tank sealer. And like I said, I'm going to paint a... A little layer here on the bottom over that pinhole and try not to put it on there too heavy because you're you're about to go back over this here in just a second and what you want to do is just lay that piece of mesh right over top of that that pinhole and just take your tip of your brush and just kind of push it in to the uh, tank sealer and you can see immediately that the tank sealer starts absorbing into the fiber and it goes ahead and just lays down flat and I'd paint out a little bit away from it anywhere where there's bare steel you guys can see where I I uh, took a, a wire wheel and cleaned it down to the bare metal and now you can see that that is patched and that little fiber patch that's on there, uh, it's just gonna, it's just gonna cure in, and and seal up, and it's you know not even gonna be an issue, not really even gonna know that it's there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take and and I'm gonna 
flip the tank over and I'm gonna do right here on the front as well. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of that tank sealer, paint right over the pinhole. And guys, this, this is not hard at all. I mean, trust me, it's so easy a caveman could do it. I promise. And then you take your patch that I've already cut to, to fit. And then you can see that it's right there on that crease. So part of it wants to come up and the other part of it wants to lay down. So once you put a little bit of that tank sealer on there, it, it sticks really good and you don't have to fight with it. But just take and, and press it down and just keep working that tank sealer into those fibers and it absorbs really good like i said you don't you don't have to fight with it it it, it does a good job at laying down flat now one tip that i'll go ahead and tell you is you know when you cut your patches out don't cut them square just cut them round that way you don't always have that one that one side that is trying to fight you and stick up you know that's the way that I, I done it. And they might tell you to do it a different way. And, you know, they it might be better to do it uh, square. But, you know, it just seemed to work out good for me cutting it round. So, anyways. So, I'm going to set my paintbrush to the side. And then now, I'm going to go back and I'm just going to stir this uh, tank sealer. And then once I've got it mixed up, which I, it's pretty much mixed. I've been sitting here mixing it for several minutes off camera. And then now what you want to do is just take and pour it right on into the tank, just like this. And this little bitty can right here um, will coat up to a five-gallon tank. So this tank here is probably, I'm guessing, three gallons or so. It's not very big and I'm just gonna leave a little bit I mean just there's a little bit of residual uh, tank sealer right there in the can and I'm just gonna leave some in there so that way uh, in case I need to touch up around the lid once I remove the lid after I shake it up and everything and, and move it around or if I need to touch one of these patches up then there'll be a little bit of sealer in there to to coat it so Anyways, now I'm going to go ahead and take the uh, Walmart bag. So you can see right there, it's uh, folded over, four layers. And so I'm just going to stick it right here. Then I'm going to take the cap, put on there, push it down in there real good. I tried to keep that off the side of there, but maybe I need to trim it. All right, now you don't have to worry about it getting into the patched area. I'm just gonna shake it around. Not really shake it, but just kinda move it from one side to the other as if you were trying to paint the inside because that's basically what you're doing you're just moving this around and you want to coat every bit of the inside of this so it's nice and sealed up and so the better you do right here better it's gonna seal so all right do this for about 30 minutes try your best to get it evenly coated in there as possible now there, there is a like a little area once you open the lid it goes down about probably two and a half inches it's like a little um i don't know like a little baffle area that that goes down in there and and it's it's hard to uh pour the get whatever liquids in here poured out of here it's just really difficult so what I'm going to do is uh, 
at the very end when I have to drain all this out instead of undoing this and trying to pour it out the top because it's not going to pour very well. Well, I'm just going to take and cut the zip tie off the nipple and the take the gloves off and then I'm going to pour it uh, in into this uh, dish right here or I'm going to set it on top of, I've got a five gallon bucket right here next to me and so I'm just going to set it right in there and you just have it drain and that way I don't have to try to fight trying to get it out the top because that would be very very difficult the way that this gas tank is set up I've sat here at the table and just uh, flipped this thing around and, and uh, moved it around and tried to coat every single square inch of this tank and literally I've been going at it for 30 minutes exactly and you know I'm pretty sure that I've got it all covered you know, I tried my very best to make sure that it's nice and, and uh, complete and so anyways I'm gonna go ahead and take a pair of cutters I'm gonna cut this little zip tie whoop off the bottom there now what I'm gonna do is take and I, I've got a five gallon bucket right here on the table and I am just going to take and turn this gas tank upside down with the the nipple facing down into the bucket and I'm just going to let it drain since I can't really open the the spout on top and pour it out I'm just going to let it go out this this nipple here so just bear with me now I'm fixing to take the lid uh, up here off and you know it's going to have that sealant all over that Walmart bag and on the lid so have a have another Walmart bag ready to uh, to catch all the the extra tank sealer. So I'm just going to put it over my hand and open the tank and that way I never even have to touch nothing. And it's just put it all right in the garbage. And I know you're going to say, well, you should have wore you some gloves and you wouldn't have to worry about it. Yeah, that's true. That's not a glove person. And so you can see it, it didn't get any on that gasket. It stayed nice and clean. So I'm going to set that aside. And you can see I didn't get any on my hands. So I'm just going to wrap it up in that bag. My hands stayed nice and clean. Now I can take the flashlight and look down into the tank and see how good of a job I did or if I didn't do a very good job. Yeah, let's let you guys look too. Ooh, about flipped it over. <laughs> All right, looks like I did a pretty darn good job. You can see that it's nice and coated. Now right in here, or on the inside of that, that neck, I'm gonna have to paint some of that. I knew I would, just simply because it's hard to get, um, get it maneuvered around to get up into that, that area. So, you know, I'm fine with that. So anyways, I think it looks pretty doggone good. It's all nice and, and sealed up. Shouldn't have to worry about it. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm good. Now one thing I do want to make mention is, you know, if you've got a, a painted gas tank, that, that acid will uh, dull the paint down. So... You know, just expect that. You know, this is an old generator tank, and and uh, so I really didn't care if it was doled down. But you can, you know, if there's a way that you want to protect it, uh, you know, if you've got a really nice paint job or something, I don't, I'm not sure how you would uh, protect it to where you keep all the acid and stuff off the paint. You could reach out to the KBS coatings and ask them. They might be able to tell you some sort of wrap or something you can put on it. But uh, you know. I think it's done a pretty good job, so I'm going to 
make sure everything's draining out of that pit or that out of that nipple and then I'm gonna um, sm smear this out just a little bit get a little bit of a run and, uh, and then should be good to go and then what you do is just let it set in a well ventilated area don't try to heat it up with a heat gun to make it dry faster don't try to do any kind of tricks to make it dry faster just let it nature take its course let it set for five days and uh it'll cure and so and then when it's done curing then you can test it with water first and then then uh, after you've seen that it's sealed up then you can uh, test it with gas um, me, I'm probably just going to put gas in it. I'm probably not even going to test it with water. I feel confident in what I did and uh, I think it's got a good seal on it. So, you know, but the directions does say to, to, uh, test it first with water. But, uh, anyways, now it's just a waiting game. Just leave it alone for five days and, and, uh, see what happens. So stay tuned. All right, guys. Well, it's been five, six days now since I coated the inside of the tank and I made the repairs to the outside. And, uh, you know, I'm really pleased with the way that it, it turned out. Uh, now, if you're wondering why uh, all this looks, there's a few little runs and drips right in there. I just cut the top of them off. And the reason that it, it ran was because if you look here at the bottom of the tank, there's that little drain nipple right in there. So I plugged this off and I put the sealant inside of it and you know I moved it around uh, for like 30 minutes and coated the inside of the tank. But I did not want to let the tank cure with this nipple pointed down because if you did, uh, that nipple would fill up right in there and it would just harden up and you, there would be no way to get gas out of that nozzle. So I had to leave the tank flipped upside down just like this. And as you can see, this patch here dried, you know, pretty smooth. But the one on top, I uh, had a little bit of a drip in it. And that was my fault because I ac accidentally put a little bit too much uh, of that sealer on the outside and it just uh created a leak because it was you know uh dripping out the top there so anyways it doesn't bother me because i know that it's sealed up and this uh this uh mesh stuff that they send with you i mean it's it's crazy uh once you put that that rust sealer on that mesh i mean it hardens up and you can tell it's super strong i mean there's no pushing it in and trying to dent it and i mean it, it, this stuff is incredibly strong that coating is super strong so anyways uh, i am thoroughly thoroughly impressed with the the coating and the way that it's uh, sealed everything up i took a paintbrush and just painted the uh the part of the lid right in here uh, because you know whenever i put the acid on there it kind of etched that that metal on the the lid as well so i wanted uh, to protect it to keep it from rusting so you can see uh, just how how it coated that that lid and you know right there is a, a piece of the chain um, so you know uh, you wouldn't lose the gas cap it's connected to the to the tank and I this one broke off so uh, I just took and painted some of that uh, tank sealer on there and it was so strong that that piece of chain is now uh, secured to the top of that cap. I mean, it is not going anywhere. And, you know, again, uh, there's no way you can scratch this with a fingernail to try to get it off. I mean, it is a very hard coating. Now, to show you the inside, I told you guys that right inside this area here, uh, it goes down probably two inches, two and a half inches. And there's like a little um, area that that's kind of blocked off where you can't see in that tank on each side. It's not like you can shine your light in and get a glimpse. <clears throat> so that makes it kind of difficult to, to, to get a really good uh, coating on this style of tank. But if you've got like a motorcycle tank, it'd be really easy because it, it usually don't have that, that area that re is recessed down in there. So anyways, let me turn the light on and you can see the inside of that tank looks absolutely perfect 
I mean, I, I couldn't be any happier. Yeah, there's going to be some runs in there because, you know, you can't you can't get them all out. I mean, you're you're moving this uh, coating around on the inside just from, you know, gravity and, you know, that coating's flowing wherever it wants to. And so, uh, but I, I got a really good coating on the inside of the tank, you can tell. So it's really important that you move the tank around for a good solid 30 minutes and make sure that you, you get a good uh, coating throughout that tank. So when you're done, you know, it's all sealed up. And so uh, I showed you the, the top part here. Let me flip it back over. <clears throat> now there was no leakage or anything right around here, but there was a weld there and I didn't want it to, uh, you know, have any problems on down the roads. So I just stuck some of that tank sealer in there. I didn't prep it. I just wanted to see if it would stick on top of that paint. And uh, it looked like it, you know, it did. Um, so I just stuck that in there just for kicks. But this is where I made the repair. And you can see that uh, I added uh, some of that mesh on there and then painted over top of it with a tank sealer. And then I took a second piece of mesh. I don't know if I was supposed to or not. But I uh, took another piece of mesh and just laid it over top of there and uh, put some some more tank sealer on there. So I've got two layers of mesh and uh, some tank sealer on there. And it, it actually done a really good job. And like I said, this stuff is, you're not going to, you're not going to bend or break that. It's not going anywhere. So I'm really confident uh, that it's going to seal up. So anyways, I'm going to put the tank back on the generator and we're going to see uh, just how good a job uh, it does. Stay tuned. All right. Well, you can see that I got the gas tank back on the generator and uh, she's ready to roll. I put some gasoline in her and you can see right down in there, got some fresh gas and and uh, don't know if she's going to crank up or not. She might, she might not. I'm not sure really how much rust got down into the uh, carburetor. I don't know if any uh, got in there or not, but I know the fuel filter was completely full the filthiest orange dirty rust you can imagine and so um i'm happy to say don't have any kind of leaks or any of that now i did spill a little bit of gas right here filling it up but uh you know so far so good no leaks and and uh don't seem to have any problems and it's nice to look in that tank and see uh clean fuel in there so anyways i'm gonna try to start her up here and all right guys well uh, the tank turned out great and I just wanted to uh, log on to KBS's website and show you guys exactly what I ordered and it's this uh, cycle tank sealer kit it treats up to five gallons and then uh, right in here it gives you I don't know if you guys can see where I've got the, the little cursor but it asks you do you want mesh or no mesh and you just check that box if you want it and if you don't and uh, this product here for all these products to do the tank uh, it was $43.95 plus uh, shipping. So anyways, um, I uh, got to say that shipping is only like uh, under $5 or under $50. It's, it costs $5 to ship and over $50. It's free shipping. So, you know, um, that's not bad at all. So anyways, make sure you check out their website. And these guys have got a ton of different products, you know for you know rust preventative you know on your hot rod or you know farm equipment whatever you got they've got you know anything and everything i'm not going to go through their their whole lineup but you can you can check out their website i'll put a link in the description down below and you can see uh just what all they have so anyways appreciate you guys uh watching and make sure you like and subscribe to my channel and make sure you hit that notification bell so that way when i do some future videos you guys uh, get notified. So anyways, thanks for watching.